Mountain Blade has a lot of the time revolved around one power point. While it hasn't been so foremost and upfront through Warband and the other games, there has always been this thing there. It has always been a renown that keeps you going through the world and advancing in progression for you as a character. But how is that changing in Mountain Blade 2 Banlord? And boy, is it changing quite a lot. I mean, in the previous Mountain Blade games, let's take Warband for example, you'd have your renown that you build up by doing certain things, by doing quests, by, you know, improving your relations with certain people, by helping out villagers, by actually taking cities as well, depending on whether you wanted to be famous or infamous. But this was all really directed around you as a character it would all be your renown growing as your character as you would level up and not really anything to do with the faction that you grow and really nurture later on in the game but this is where it changes in Mountain Blade 2 Banlord. There are two new features which work hand in hand to create a deeper and more immersive experience when it comes to the single player and its renown. If anyone doesn't know what it is, it is sort of how famous you are throughout the world. You can make a name for yourself and this renown affects certain things. In Warband, the more renown you had, the more likely it was someone was going to marry you or serve you and do things for you. If you had low renown, they weren't going to really know who you were so they wouldn't really care. Care, meaning that you wouldn't really be able to advance in certain places throughout Calradia. But in Banlord it changes, and the difference is, it is not just a renown of you as a character. It's really focusing on your clan, and really the people around you as well when you set it up. Clan members can earn renown for their clan by performing a number of actions. These are things that are granted quite similar to Warband, winning battles, doing quests for people, competing in tournaments, and acting in the name of your clan, rather than just as you as an individual, meaning that everything you do in order to gain up your infamacy will have side effects on you throughout the world as your clan. This comes in quite usefully when it comes to the whole air system. When you die in Banlord, it isn't like Warband, in the terms that you couldn't really die in Warband, you could retire or you could get captured. In this, it is a permanent death mode, or at least you have the option to do that in Banlord, meaning that once you're dead, you're dead, no matter how it happens, no matter matter what you do to really cause that, you're dead. And this means that you're going to have to be taken over by an heir, whether it's a son or a relative. This is how it really comes up, and we've had a lot of developer blogs talking about that. But this means that you can't really have a renown that's just on one individual character. Because it doesn't really make sense that you build up without renown as a character, then you die and you'd have to start from scratch. It would be more of a thing where you as a, a player would build up the renown as your clan. Maybe you're incredible at battles and you're feared throughout the land of Calradia. Then when you die, your son takes over. People aren't just going to be like, who's that guy? No, they're going to be like, he's the son of that infamous king, that infamous warrior who's built up a clan. And they're still going to have some of those effects that your previous ancestors really built up for you. And you're able to control that as the player. Whether you want to be known as a great warrior or a trustworthy person or even a sly manipulative lord, you can do this and it will have knock-on effects to when you die and your heirs take over from you. Well, what does this renown do? Well, it unlocks and helps you progress throughout the game but adding in a new thing called tiers. It opens up access to greater capabilities and additional parts of the game over time. These can be certain things such as being a mercenary for a faction, they're more likely to accept you as a mercenary if you have some renown already. This means that once you've reached the second tier of your renown, then you'll be given consideration to go and join them. I guess this is very similar when it comes to not just being a mercenary, but also being a lord in that army and commanding your own segment. If you don't have the renown, if you don't have the right tier and enough renown, you're not even going to be considered for those positions. It is key when it comes to pledging vassalage to a kingdom. It actually has proved that the player's capabilities and it shows that they are ready to be involved in the grander events that are unfolding around you. But as we mentioned, there are multiple tiers. They're rewarded with additional party slots and increased companion limits. So this means that the more renown you get, the more you progress. The more you progress, the more companions are opened up for you to be able to introduce to your party. Not only companions though, but it opens up more possibilities in having more caravans, being able to carry more things. These can make sure you can travel further, have more men in your party. So renown is vital to progressing not only economically, socially, but 
also militarily and it really helps build up a different progression system in the game. Do you have to go down this route? Of course not, there are so many different options but it's just another one of those things you can keep in mind when going through it. It's not trying to make this as a forced progression system though. Of course, like I said, it's something that you can either choose to focus on or if you just want to play Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord as you really want to just chill and grow as you do. As a very casual type playing, you are now building the background anyway as you do things that you would normally do if it's not something that you want to 100% focus on to really grow at a faster pace. But that's pretty much it for the renown in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. I'm really looking forward to seeing what new things it can open up, what the tiers can do, but that will have to be for another development blog. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. But until then guys, I will see you in the next one.